a fellow Vault Wales, Sangry Turtle, and in this video I want to show you the best possible modifications for the most commonly used rifles like the Fixer, Handmade, or a little bit less commonly used Assault Rifle. But before we jump into the video I want to say thank you to my latest to Patreon and welcome them into Turtle's Army. Welcome Shugi and Radiger Lowman. I'm really grateful for your support. And now into the video. Enough riding this. Okay. A weapon workbench and I will not be testing every single mod because I was doing similar stuff in the past. Uh, this video is more like a guide. And as you can see, I have unlocked all possible mods for assault rifle, for the handmade and for the fixer. Because Fixer has like most of the mods and like almost every single mode for all those free rifles works in the same way. I will mostly discuss it based on the Fixer, but I will show some exceptions uh, when, when Handmade is involved or stuff like that. First, in case of the Fixer, we have like plenty of receivers. There is a lot of, a lot of this, but most of them is totally useless. Basically 38 allows you to change the ammo, but you don't want to use it like that. Regular automatic, it's only useful if you don't have other options. And oh, by the way, if you don't know how to unlock mods for the fixer, you unlock them by scrapping combat rifles. Fixer is basically a combat rifle and combat rifle will have exactly the same modifications. If you have combat rifle, you can follow this guide as well. Those are the same modifications. Calibrated receiver, because it's a critical damage that I explained already in my video about critical and sneak criticals, uh, then you don't want it. You don't want any receiver that increase critical damage because it's almost pointless. Then if you want, yeah, that's one of the good ones. If you want to make it a sniper rifle or just a rifleman build, hardened receiver is your basically go to receiver. If you choose to go for automatic weapon, you have powerful automatic receiver. That's your go to receiver. The best damage and that's what matter with the receivers. The base damage is what's important here. Apart from that, you have a prime versions for both automating and semi receiver. It's only useful if you want to use this weapon mainly to kill Scorch Beast Queen. Otherwise, it's like the same damage as you can see it's 80. Automatic Prime is 81. That you can say it's exactly the same damage. And only difference is this extra superior damage versus Scorch Beast Queen and all other Scorch Beasts. Scorch as well, but it doesn't matter, they, they're so squishy they die in one shot regardless. Then those two only for Scorch Beast Queen fights. Scorch Killer's Receiver? Never use this one. It's just bad. Even versus Scorch. Now about those .38 receivers. If you have a lot of .38 caliber ammo and you want to actually use it out, then two receivers you can consider for Commando, it's .38 automatic receiver, and for Rifleman build, it's refined port 88 receivers. All other point eight, point 38 receivers are useless. You either go for automatic or refined. If you are thinking about using receiver for PvP, then there is one exception from all because in PvP, a damage of the receiver doesn't matter. Then you want something like that, like focus receiver, improve hip fire accuracy, automatic fire because damage is not important anymore. Damage in PvP will override the damage from the receiver. Then you have no benefits if you use powerful receiver, powerful automatic receiver over focused receiver. And that concludes the receiver choices. It's really not as much as you would think there is. Now there is a barrel. You have a couple options here. You do not want any of the standard barrel. Uh, basically your choices it's a difference between accuracy and recoil. You don't really want short barrel. It helps with the recoil, but it penalizes your range so much that you don't want to use it. 
then what you need to know. Only the aligned barrel will reduce your AP cost in VATS. Then if you are a VATS user, you want to install a line barrel. Apart from that, it's a universal barrel. It's help with accuracy and recoil. If you don't care about VATS cost, you choose what's your preference, true or stabilized. But I strongly recommend to go for long version. That's about it in barrels category. Then we have stock. You definitely don't want to improve your, your bash damage because it does nothing, but there is an exception. Uh, the forceful stock and a line stock both reduces your VAT's AP cost, but unlike a line stock, the forceful stock, uh, it says improve bash damage, but what's important and what it doesn't say in here is improve the weapon durability. Then if you want weapon durability, and use it mainly in VATS, you want to choose forceful stock. If you will have a mixed usage, VATS and hip firing, you want to go for a line stock. If you rarely are using VATS or you don't care about the cost of use in VATS, you choose your favorite, accuracy or recoil control, true stock or stabilized stock. Next category is a magazine. And we have a lot of choices, but only couple meaningful. Perforating magazine, you choose it for damage. If you want to increase your damage, you go for perforating magazine. Although it will not be reflect in damage numbers that you can see on the screen, if you have them active, it will increase your damage. Downside of this magazine, it will as well increase AP cost in VATS. Quick magazine, I cannot recommend this one. Piercing magazine, I cannot recommend this one. Then we have stinging magazine. Honestly, I do not recommend this one as well. All the choices you have in here, it's either swift magazine, if you want higher ammo capacity, faster reload, and lower AP cost in VATS, or perforating magazine, if you want the maximum damage out of your bullets. The difference in damage between stinging and perforating is big enough to justify using perforating even if you want bigger magazine. If you are not happy with perforating, just skip stinging and use swift. Then we have a sight. That's pretty straightforward, but uh, let me quickly tell you that if you choose reflex sight, your AP cost will be much lower than if you choose any other site. And if you care about VATS and you want to lower your AP cost, you always go for reflex sites. Other than that, I will not recommend long scopes because magnification is just way too high when you take into consideration what's the weapon actual range. Then I will recommend short scope for snipers or short recon scope if you want to have these handy markers on your compass after staring on the target for a couple seconds. How useful is night vision scope? I don't see the need of using it myself, but you need to try it if you want to make a decision if you prefer night vision scope over just a short scope. Then basically it's a choice between having a scope and accuracy that comes with a scope and lower AP cost in VATS from reflex sight. And then we have muzzle. There is not too many choices and basically only one that matters. You should use suppressor if you are using stealth at all. If you want to be able to use stealth, you want suppressor installed. Otherwise, because every single muzzle reduces the range of the weapon, you go to go you want to go without any muzzle. And suppressor for stealth, no muzzle for anything else. Although, obviously, like at this moment, stealth is so powerful that it's hard to imagine not using it, at least occasionally. Now what I need to tell you about difference from fixer and, let's say, handmade. When you open the receivers, there is basically less receivers because you cannot change the caliber of the weapon. There is only 556 or ultra sight 556, the same rules as the fixer applies. There is scotch killer's receiver as well, not worth it at all, but there is one mention 
in receivers. For automatic fire, you have tweaked receiver that improves your critical shot damage and for whatever reason, it's doing the same damage, 75 as stated here, as powerful automatic receiver. Then there is like no harm in using tweaked receiver over powerful automatic receiver. Although, because this improvement to critical shot damage is very small, even if you decided to put powerful automatic receiver, it will be hard to tell if there is any difference. Now, barrels are the same, stock is about the same, and magazine. Uh, everything is about the same with an ex exception. Using magazine, it's definitely no go. Apart from being bad by itself, it's bad and allow you to hold like half of the clip at a time. In the past, stinging magazine was really good because there was extended ammo capacity to 35 instead of 25, not anymore. About the muzzle, it's the same and about the skin, it's up to you. Then there is an assault rifle. What you should know about it uh, generally, the main difference between assault rifle and other rifles is faster reload, but lower damage overall. About the receivers, it's the same situation like with the fixer, but only one caliber to choose from, only 556. But unlike the handmade, tweaked automatic receiver is doing 50 damage, and powerful automatic receiver is doing 56. Therefore, in case of this weapon, it works as intended and you want to use powerful automatic receiver for commando. About the barrels, the same rules applies. Stock, exactly the same as the fixer. Magazine, the same rules apply, but generally you have a faster reload. Then perforating seems to be even better choice. As you can see, reload is very fast. Although, if you care mainly about AP cost in VATs, Steel Swift magazine will be better. The actual difference in VATs between perforating magazine and Swift magazine is quite significant. Then you will definitely feel it. About the sides, the same rules apply as for the fixer. About the muzzle, the same rule apply. Elder suppressor or nothing. And that's just a quick guide for the best mods for your rifles. If you have any questions, please let me know, I will try to answer in comment section. And now, thanks a lot for watching, and see you guys in the next one.